you know what I'm here for. Back on top, punching the clock, clutching sanity. What's good, y'all? Welcome back. We got a trade article to react to today. It's going to be one player that each NBA team needs to trade in 2022. It's a Bleacher Report article. Should be interesting. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and let's get into it. As you can see, here's the article by Dan Fable. Shout out to him, Bleacher Report. Um, as you can see, the cover photo is Russell Westbrook and THD. So it'll be interesting to see who they have for the Lakers. But first, it should be the Atlanta Hawks. And they have Danilo Gallinari. Kind of makes sense. Um, he's making like 20 million a year or some, something around that range. He's making a decent amount of money and he's not really doing like crazy things. Probably somebody that could be a candidate to get traded um, sometime this season. And yeah, they're basically just saying like the contract is not living up to his production and it would be good for them to, you know, alleviate some of that cap stress. Maybe they could be able to keep Cam Reddish in that aspect. So I could definitely see that potentially being a move. I'm sure some maybe like teams that are in contention could use Danilo Gallinari. He's just making a lot of money. He's making a lot of money. So I don't know how viable that actually is. Next, we got the Celtics and Dennis Schroeder is the player that they say should be traded. Let's see what it says here. Basically, what he's saying is the Celtics are not going to be able to bring Dennis, uh, I'm sorry, Dennis Schroeder back in the offseason. He's going to be a free agent. Of course, he took the one-year gamble on himself, and he's been playing pretty good. He's going to get a lot more money than the 5.9 that you're paying in this season. Um, the Celtics, I talked about them in the video yesterday. They're in kind of a, a weird spot. Um, I don't think any trades that they make is really going to make this team that much better, so maybe you just ride out and to see what happens in the offseason. I don't really think trading Dennis Schroeder is going to do much, maybe get you much back. He's not making that much money. And this is a team that is in kind of a bad cap spot. So I don't really see the Celtics trading Dennis Schroeder if that is a player that does get moved, but we'll see. We'll see what happens maybe once the trade deadline comes around. Next to Brooklyn Nets, Javon Carter. Um, I guess. I don't really have too much to say. Javon Carter was in a rotation early on and he kind of fell out the rotation a little bit. Um, I don't think his impact hasn't been as much as I thought it would be. Probably because like Patty Mills has been playing so good at the guard spot. Um, we can move on to the next team. Shout out to Javon though. I think he can be an impactful player elsewhere. It's just probably not the minutes available for him in Brooklyn, especially with Kyrie Irving coming back on a part-time basis. The Hornets, Kelly Uber, this is it's an interesting one. I'm gonna read what this is. But basically they're saying they should trade him because his contract's not fully guaranteed if he gets moved. So it's more of a cap thing. Kelly Uber has been playing really, really well for this team. Um, now, I don't know if Kelly Oubre will get you what they should be going after, and that's Miles Turner. Um, they might have to trade a Gordon. I don't know. I don't know what the Pacers are looking to get back. But whatever trade the Hornets do make, if they do make a move, should be centered around getting the big man, and most specifically, Miles Turner. The Bulls, Kobe White. Um, I probably could have seen this one coming. I see a lot of Bulls fans really wanting Jeremy Grant, but not being willing to give up Patrick Williams. And I don't know, I don't know. Like I will probably be a little hesitant to give up P. Will too, but this is a team that I said in a recent video, I think they are kind of championship contenders. I think they should be looked more as, as a team that can actually make a deep playoff run, like kind of similar to the Phoenix Suns last year. I think they had that possibility. Um, Kobe West been playing a lot better recently since he's been starting. Um, but Lonzo Ball just came back last night. Kobe was cool off the bench, but is he gonna be able to still play well in that bench role that's really to be seen and he's somebody that's probably the movable piece if they do want to make a trade um i forgot to mention in the video the other day this team also is like looking for some bigger wing depth because they don't really have that uh, they don't really have great wing play like we see troy brown jr getting minutes for them which they would like to upgrade that position along with you know the backup big but a team that's definitely, I think, going to be in the market this um, trade deadline, you know, during trade season and in the buyout market, too. I think the Bulls will be a busy team once again. You know, we've seen them busy in the offseason. They were busy last trade deadline. I think it's going to be, you know, same thing this year. This front office is not afraid to make moves. Interesting. Kevin Love. Um, let's see what it says. I don't think Kevin Love should be the guy that should be moved, though. Um, we just seen they made the trade for Rondo. I think that's a, a cool point guard to pick up after Ricky Rubio went down. Rondo said he's ready for a bigger role, so hopefully we'll see what he has left in the tank. K, K Love's been playing really good. He's been playing really good. For me personally, just idealistically, I see Karis LeVert's been made available. I would want to go after him. Now, I don't know if Kevin Love's probably the guy that gets that deal done because we're not sure what the Pacers want back, but I would like to see... You know, you don't know if you want to pay Colin Sexton or if, you know, you'll be able to bring him back or whatever. I think going after a Karis LeVert would be cool. That's just idealistically, but they're saying Kevin Love. 
I'm not sure if that's the guy that should be moved because he's been playing really well and he seems like he's enjoying playing basketball again. And and do you really want to mess with what you have going on right now in Cleveland? I'm not sure about that. Mavs, they say Tim Hardaway Jr. kind of makes sense. He hasn't been that good this season after signing a nice extension because he played well towards the end of last season. Um, the Mavs, man, they, they just need more sh shot creating around Luka. Um, Jalen Brunson's has really emerged, but he's going to be a free agent. You're going to have to pay him probably good money if you want to retain him. Otherwise, he'll go somewhere else and get a nice little bag. So, Tim Hardaway Jr. just sucks because you just trade. I mean, you just re-signed him for a nice little contract and now already talking about trade talks. I think if he became made available, he would be a hot commodity for a lot of teams around the league. The Nuggets, Jermichael Green, um... Nuggets, weird spot. You're missing your second and third best offensive players. So I don't think a splash trade is really necessary. This just means like probably getting money off the books or maybe just adding a smaller piece to maybe try and win like a playoff series here or there or something like that. I don't really have too much to say about this. And you knew the Pistons was going to be Jeremy Grant. I don't think it's a matter of if, but just when he gets traded and where to. Um, every team, this is what I've seen on Twitter, every team that has dreams of contending, aspirations of being a contender, is looking at Jeremy Grant. But I think most teams around the league are probably going to be calling the Pistons phones, and I think he will fit in well anywhere he goes. I think this will probably be the trade piece that, I think he's going to be the player that's going to be most sought after, you know, this trade deadline, um, for sure. Be interested to see where he goes, and, you know, I'm glad to see that he's shown what he can do as a top scoring option, but I'm thinking about making a video on the Pistons because I like what they're doing in their rebuild. I think moving Jeremy Grant only bolsters that, you know, the direction that they're going in. The War James Wiseman, I don't think the Warriors should really make any moves unless like, unless like you can get Miles Turner or I don't know, unless a piece really just becomes available that you really like can't pass up on. And maybe that is a James Wiseman move. Let's see what it says here. Yeah, here they say maybe a can't miss star will, you know, want out by the trade deadline i don't know if a can't miss guy is gonna want out but the only team i can really think of like that has pieces that is maybe viable is like the pacers that they made available but you know how do, how would sabonis fit not sure miles turner will probably fit in but do you want to give up james wiseman who we we've only seen it says he has only played in like 45 games since he left high school like he still has so much untapped potential. I think people forget how talented and how sought after he was coming out of high school and then going into the NBA draft, you know, in 2020. So I don't, I'm not sure if I'd be willing to give up on him right now, especially when you're the Warriors, you're the best team in basketball. You've been playing so well all year long. Should you mess with what's already going great? I'm not sure about that. The Rockets, Christian Wood. Um, yeah, the, the seven, eight game win streak that the Rockets went on seems like a long time ago they had Christian Wood get benched. They had Kevin Porter Jr. leave the arena at halftime a few nights ago. This it's a messy situation in Houston. Um, honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure what to say about the Rockets, but I could definitely see Christian Wood getting moved, and I could see a lot of teams being interested. He has a pretty friendly contract. He's not making that much money. I think it's like three years, 42 million, so like 14 mil a year. So. I can see a lot of teams being interested, but man, the Rockets is a messy situation. Pacers, Miles Turner, I don't think we have to say it. We talked about Miles Turner so many times in different trade videos, so we're gonna move on to the next team, which is the Clippers, Eric Bledsoe. Um, apparently, Eric Bledsoe's been playing decent lately. He was getting votes for like player of the week last week, which is kind of crazy in 2021 to say. But the Clippers, I think they're another team. There shouldn't be too much urgency to make any moves because if Kawhi comes back, it's going to be very late in the season, and he's not going to be ready for playoff basketball. So just continue to play with what you got, unless like a trade becomes available that you just can't pass up. Um, maybe Bledsoe's the move because you can, you know, his contract is decent enough to where you can get something of value back. But I don't really see the Clippers being rushing to make any moves. The Lakers is Russell Westbrook. Let me read what it says real quick. So basically, what they're saying is like. What, what he's thinking is trading THT and like Kendrick Nunn is not going to fix the Lakers problems. I don't think you could find a team that would be willing to take on Russell Westbrook right now and give you pieces in return that will help you. So Lakers are in a very weird spot. Um, we'll see what kind of magic Rob Palenka can pull out of his, of his hat, but I don't think there's a lot saving this team. And the problem is bigger than Russell Westbrook. I think that's safe to say. This team has just gaping, gaping problems. And just trading, hypothetically trading Russell Westbrook's not going to think that. I mean, fix that because 
it's not the same Russell Westbrook from like three years ago. This is a much different player, and you're not gonna get that much in return, especially when he's making like 40 plus million dollars. Grizzlies Kyle Anderson makes sense. He's an expiring contract who is being outplayed by younger players, and the Grizzlies are a team that's pretty confident in trading you know, more veteran guys to get younger dudes that fit the timeline. I could definitely see this trade and I could see a lot of teams being interested in Kyle Anderson. The Heat, KZ Akpala, um, yeah, I, I guess if they have to have one dude to trade, it would be him because you wouldn't trade anybody else uh, like above him. So I guess we'll move on to the next team. I don't have much to say about that. The Bucks, Jordan and Mora, okay. Yeah, just another team that has a lot of very valuable pieces that you don't want to move. And the main thing they're saying here is that he's going to be a restricted free agent soon. So a team, he's shown that he has good scoring ability. So a team will probably throw him a little bag. Um, and the Bucks won't have the money of the match. So it does make sense to probably get something from him, you know, while he's on your team. The Timberwolves, Malik Beasley. Let's see what it says. It actually kind of makes a little bit of sense. Um, a team that would like to have some nice wing depth uh, for sure. Um... Malik Beasley makes the money to where you could probably get a nice piece in return. And the other guys that they had listed was like Patrick Beverly, who has really helped this team so much on the defensive side of the floor. And Torian Prince has been good for them too. And he's one of their only wings on the team, like legitimate wing player. So Malik Beasley would be the odd guy out. And I think, I think he is just the piece that's like, you know, you already got Ant who can score the ball at will. Cat's a very good offensive player. D'Angelo Russell is kind of taking a step back offensively, but we know what he can do on that side of the floor. Do you really need another guy that's really mainly offense? You know, I think they could move a Malik Beasley, who has a pretty like fair contract, he's making like $16 million, and get something in return that can help you, you know, especially on the defensive side of the floor, just as far as like a 3 and D type player. The Knicks, Julius Randle, interesting. Let's see what this says here. Yeah, so basically they're saying what we already knew. Um, like Julius Randle's just, he's, what he was last season was probably the best version of Julius Randle that we might ever see because he was very elite last season, especially shooting the ball. And we just all kind of knew like, the whole Knicks team was playing above their head. I was having this conversation with my dad the other day and we all knew that they were playing above their head. And now it's just being evident that Julius Randle is not a number one guy. Would you trade, would I trade him? I don't know if I could get another piece in that could be a number one option. Sure, but those guys aren't always available. I don't know if Julius Randle's the guy that you do trade, especially when you just gave him a bag. Uh, it says here four years, 117 million, which kicks in next season. I don't know what team will be willing to take that contract on, especially if this is the production that you're getting. But I think this season, like we know Julius Randle's better. He's been kind of poor this year, but is he the all NBA player that he was last season? Like, is that what we're gonna see consistently from him going forward? I'm not too sure about that. Elegance Jackson Hayes makes sense. Former number uh, first round pick who has spent time in the G League and has had problems off the court. Um, could definitely see him getting moved. A team may be taking a chance on him. Uh, the Pelicans, it just seems like it's always something going on with them. Next team, let's move on. OKC, Derek Favors, could definitely see this. I think he's somebody that has good basketball left in him. He's just playing on a team that wants to rebuild. Uh, I think a team might even be willing to throw like a first round pick, maybe a couple seconds. You know, that's all OKC wants is draft picks. So, could definitely see Derek Favors getting moved. The Magic Garrett Harris um, could definitely see him and Terrence Ross getting moved at some point this season. They've both been playing really good too. Gary Harris, this is probably the best basketball he's played since like 20, like 16 or 17. Like it's been a long time since Gary Harris has actually been good on the offensive side of the floor. He's always been a good defender, but it's like after he got paid, he just like stopped making jump shots. Like he became a poor jump shooter. Um, glad to see him hooping again, and I could see him getting moved to a team that's trying to contend for sure. Philly, Ben Simmons. I'm not talking any more Ben Simmons until I see either he plays a game or he gets traded. That's all. I'm tired of the Ben Simmons talking, man. But Jalen Smith for the Suns, interesting because he's been playing really good basketball lately. And every trade I've seen centered around the Suns is like him and Dario Sarge and maybe like a draft pick to move on and get like a, a quality piece that can help them right now. He's been playing really good lately, especially I think DeAndre Ains and health and safety protocol. So getting his draft, uh, his trade value up for sure. And he's a young player. I think he, I think he's only like 21, maybe 22 years old. So he probably has some untapped potential in there for sure. Trailblazers, Yusuf Nurkic. I've talked about the Blazers so much. Um, trade everybody. I don't, even if Dame says he wants to stay, trade him too. Just trade everybody. Kings, everyone but Tyrese 
and Rashawn Holmes. Interesting. Okay, I was wondering why they said Rashawn Holmes too. It's because he's on a pretty like friendly contract. I think it's like four years, 56 million, which is pretty good, like 14 a year. For somebody that gives you very good production, and man we've seen what Tyrese can do when he's the lead guard and he's been putting up insane numbers and realistically I just don't think De'Aaron Fox wants to be there anymore which is understandable he's been suffering in Sacramento so far his entire career and him and Tyrese they both good players but they don't play that great together um man I could I could see you could get some great value back for trading De'Aaron Fox for sure so the Kings, man, that, that's a tough decision to make, but they should definitely be thinking about it. I, I, I like this idea. Spurs, that is young. Spurs are kind of a team that's not rebuilding, but they're still not like a playoff team. Um, that Young's basically said he wants to get moved, so I could see this. Ton of teams should be interested, man. Um, I'd just be thinking like if the Bulls could have kept Thaddeus Young, that would have been a very good piece to keep. But of course, you had to go get DeMar DeRozan, and that's the guy you had to move. But yeah, a lot of teams will probably be calling the Spurs phone for Thaddeus Young. Not a big name, but somebody that is very impactful and can help a lot of teams out. I forgot Goran Dragic was even on the Raptors. Like, he hasn't played since the early part of the season. Um, man, if, if he doesn't get traded, I think a buyout is almost imminent. Uh, of course, he doesn't want to be there. And they're like, okay, if you don't want to be here, you're not going to play. Um, Dallas Mavericks. I think that's a squad that should definitely go after him for sure. Last couple teams, Jordan Clarkson for the Jazz is kind of interesting. Reigning sixth man of the year. So they're, they're saying like the options here is between Clarkson and Joe Ingles. Um, but they're, what he's basically, what the author's basically saying is he thinks Joe Ingles' playmaking ability is more valuable than Jordan Clarkson's scoring ability off the bench. And they've been increasing like Rudy Gay touches in that second unit. So that's why it would make sense to trade him and also Clarkson makes more money so it could potentially get a better return and they also have a trade exception. Jeremy Grant is the player I would love to see get moved to the Utah Jazz. Um, I think that would make the Western Conference so much more interesting. I think that's a guy that they would need. I really do. I think that would be an interesting move, but I, I, it's pretty evident. Like I think the Jazz need to make a look. They need to make a bigger move and it says right here they just brought in danny ainge not too long ago if you don't recall danny ainge typically is not you know coming in to just make small moves he wants to make a nice splash and since he didn't do it with the celtics hopefully he can do it with another team in the utah jazz that's my, my that's my shot at danny ainge but the last team on the list of course the washington wizards novice bertans I, I don't even have to really say too much. He's making a lot of money and his production just isn't like amazing. I think he's making like 17, 18 million a year. Like it, it's something, it's a big number for somebody that's a specialist. That's how much the game has changed. Like special, three point specialists get paid big bags. Could definitely see him get moved, but how many teams really value just somebody that comes in and shoots like it's just a pure jump shooter at that much money? I'm not sure be interesting and that's one player every nba team needs to trade in 2022 let me know your thoughts um were there some that you agree with some that you disagree with let me know leave a like subscribe if you're new and i'll be back next time to talk more who's with y'all peace off season let's work hey plotting my escape this game